My real name is Dora, but in the world of cosplay, I go by the name Ferasha. How did you start cosplaying? Actually, it was quite, quite a funny story. It was in the line of duty, because when we started organizing conventions in Serbia almost 10 years ago, cosplay was not really a thing here. It wasn't really popular. So, in order to promote it as part of geek culture, and in particular Japanese pop culture, which is what we were promoting in the first place, we decided to try to uh, lead by example. So our big boss said that uh, a couple of us who were hosting the main stage and who were there to basically uh, lead a program and everything, that we should dress up in cosplay. And at first I was like, do we really have to? And he said, well, you know, we should set some standards, we should do something properly, etc. And then I was okay, okay, I get it. And uh, funnily enough, I, I actually loved it because I realized that all my uh, suppressed acting needs and ambitions uh, were able to flourish with cosplay and I, I started honestly digging it and of course it went beyond just looking pretty in a costume on stage or in our conventions and turned into a full-blown madness that you can see. Which costume made by you are you most proud of? Uh, that's actually a very, very easy answer. It happens to be Griffith of Berserk, which uh, we made in 2013. Because at the time, uh, there were no armors cosplay for cosplay made in Serbia, and it was quite a difficult thing to pull off. I made it together with my best friend, the legendary Shuna, the person I mention all the time in all my posts, thanking him for being there for me and for existing in the first place. And Shunak and me wanted to make it properly so that it actually looks like an armor, which wasn't an easy thing to do because when we started looking for foreign tutorials, they all uh, referred to some super fancy and expensive crafting materials such as warblow or, I don't know, crafting foam, which we do not have here in Serbia. We cannot buy it here. And given that that was the first goddamn cosplay armor ever made here, we didn't have anyone to ask for advice, so it was like trying to, you know, reinvent the wheel, which was a fun thing to do. But then we managed to pull off the armor uh, in such a way that I think that we we pioneered the scene in, in a way, because when you look at my Griffith, the gorget is made of a bucket. Uh, the uh, armor parts, the light parts are uh, water pipes. The knees are salad bowls. Uh, the uh, shoulders are flower pots and the uh, breastplate was made of floorboards and it all still looks like a goddamn armor. So we're very proud of that because we spent uh, very little money and it took a lot of hard work and acrylic putty and sandpaper and hours and hours of hours wasted but in the end it was all worthwhile and I'm still, still proud of that uh, armor because it was the first one and one of a kind and it's made of the things that it's made of. Which one was the crowd's favorite? Honestly, I think that the crowd prefers my male characters than female characters, but when you ask for my most popular cosplays, I think that out of the girls I did, it would be Morrigan, definitely, from Dragon Age, especially because I did both versions from Origins and the Bolgan from Inquisition. Separate hands down, and Jareth the Golden King. Uh, with Jareth, it was the first time that I saw people having squealing and screaming attacks when they saw me. That was an experience, something new. Uh, in Hungary recently, I when I exited the the backstage where where I changed into my costume, I saw people who tried to sit in the chair and then fell next to the chair when they saw me or there was a girl who was just completely paralyzed, just staring at me, and I walked down to her and I, I rolled wall, the glass wall, and I said that the famous line, just feel me, love me, and do as I say, and I will be your slave. And she turned dark, dark red. It was like the, the color of beetroot red, and she, she went like, ah! It was the first time that something like that happened to me. It was like, okay, darling, are you okay? Can you calm down now? Is everything fine? <laughs> Quite an experience, definitely. 
Which character do you think you have pulled off best so far? There are two characters that I'm particularly attached to concerning my interpretation. One is Death of the Endless and another is of course Jared the Goblin King because the Goblin King is true love and it took a lot of uh, hours of rewatching the labyrinth in order to you know, name all his phrases and the, uh, the body language and the expression and everything. But I like Death very much as well. You often cosplay male characters. What do you think is needed for a female cosplayer to pull off a male character? In order to nail a male character properly, you have to uh, have uh, the posture of a man, you have to walk like a man, you have to completely get a body language, and that's not something a lot of girls can do. So it doesn't matter if you're tiny and sweet, you can actually pull off a guy if you know how to act like a guy. And that's the fun part, that the transformation into into something that I can find attractive as a woman, that's the best part. So I think that uh, if you can think like a dude, you will, you can be able to cosplay a dude, and uh, also small boobs help. Why do you prefer cosplaying villains? Basically because villains are more fun, that's the uh, usual answer I give. Uh, but there are other reasons as well, because when I cosplay, I tend to be very picky with my selection of characters and I tend to do only the characters that I can relate to in a way now. Before believing that I'm related to villains, because honest to God, even though many people think it, I'm not a heartless psychopath and born to be an evil empress of doom, honestly. Uh, what I like about well-written villains is that they are very complex and you can, when you analyze them, figure out their, their true nature, what makes them tick, what made them that way, and it helps me to relate to them in, on a very basic human level and therefore deliver a more convincing performance. For instance, with Cersei Lannister, it was a pleasure to analyze her and to see how I'm going to portray her. Funniest moment or greatest fail on a cosplay show? The funniest moment I've seen probably happened in okay, I'm not going to name the convention in order not to embarrass the person if they ever happen to see this. So in a foreign country there was a moment when a very cute looking female cosplayer was doing an energetic dancing performance on stage in a very skimpy outfit. And certain things fell out. But I have to really commend the audience for reacting in a very stoic manner that didn't even raise an eyebrow. Nobody commented anything, nobody booed or booed or reacted anyway, so she was able to recover and even finish the performance. And I have to say that when that happened, I thought, wow, this is what civilization looks like. I'm not sure that in our southern countries that would happen without any comment from the audience. And uh, personally, the, the biggest fail that happened was when we were doing the Lannisters in Romania uh, two years ago. Uh, we were performing on stage, we were doing a very intense performance with the reins of Castanier as the background, and you know how Jamie and Cersei are, you know, they're, they're very intense chemistry, the emotions, the, um, the attraction, the twisted love, the sex appeal, the violence, everything that makes the relationship. So you need to be in a very particular mindset before doing that performance, before actually going into those roles on stage in front of people. And what happened is that Jamie's armor fell apart 10 minutes before the performance, of course. The little shoulder part fell off. So I just, you know, uh, rolled my sleeves up and took a uh, blue gun and started fixing him up while he was swearing and being super nervous. And it was great in character, it was really horrible. And then all of a sudden there is this Romanian TV crew appearing, deciding that this is the perfect moment to hold interviews with us because we were there as foreign guests. And it was, it was a moment where you know, he was shoving the microphone in my face and there was the camera and I was with my sleeves up to here, out of character, trying to fix the damn armor without my Jamie having a nervous breakdown. And that was the moment when I really you know, fantasized about shoving that microphone down his throat and then he asked me why I did it once. Tell us about the conventions in your country. So, uh, I am Vice President of Sakurabana Belgrade and we do conventions. 
uh, our best known, uh, most awesome, probably best visit convention is Japanism, which we organize every first weekend of July. It has around 7,000 people and it's mostly dedicated to Japanese pop culture. So it includes anime, manga, cosplay, video games, all the shibang, so you get it. Then we have our fall convention, which is a bit for the more um, serious crowd and more general fandom, Comic-Con oriented, it's called Beacon, and it involves movies, TV shows, western comics, video games, everything that basically you can see on any average Comic-Con around the world. Then we have Chibicon, which is the last weekend of January every year. And Chibicon is just like Japanese, meaning younger crowd and Japanese stuff, only it lasts two days, not four days like Japanese. And then in the spring, usually around the beginning of April, we have our one-day specialized event, Pottermania, dedicated to the Harry Potter fandom, when we turn our main venue, the Youth Center of Belgrade, into Hogwarts. So those are our main four conventions that we do every year. And if you ask me how come that we are all still alive and breathing, I don't know, we're making it. What fictional character do you most identify with? Out of all the characters that I cosplayed and that I, I really really like, I guess that the obvious answer would be Death of the Endless. Because she's something that I can aspire to. I think that that is the only female character in pop culture that I can call my role model. Because she's uh, super sweet, intelligent, acts like a professional big sister, given that she has a very special family and if you have read the Sandman you'll probably know how it feels like to be her and even though she looks like a gloomy and dark person and for crying out loud she's dead as in the Green Reaper as in she's the one who takes our souls when we die uh, she still gets to be the most positive person around and that is something that I want to aspire to because yeah I may not seem as the happiest and the shiniest person that people meet me, but I want to show some positivity and I do tend to slip into the big sister role with my close friends, so yeah, that would definitely be the answer. Top 5 fictional characters of all time? Okay, so the list goes like this. Uh, Death of the Endless, which is pretty much obvious. Then Griffith of Berserk, who keeps fascinating me with his complexity. Then Jamie Lannister, because Jamie Lannister. Then Jared the Goblin King, because he's a super special icon from my childhood, which is still still has a very special place in my heart. And finally, Oscar for Roy and Dahl from Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Pick one. Crafting or sewing? Oh, crafting. I'm absolutely horrible at sewing. Actually, I tried several times and it was it was a disaster. I tried it even before I started cosplaying when my grandmother thought that she could teach me something when I was in elementary school. And we gave up on that after the machine was broke. So I'm not sewing. I'm crafting. I'm happy to experiment with new crafting techniques with everything related to doing something with, with hands in that way, but no sewing for me. Cosplaying or jury? Competed only once on an international competition and it was an interesting experience and I have to say that I was pretty pleased that we won the award but after a while I realized that being on the other side of the competition is something that I'm more comfortable with simply because that's how things happen for me. Anime or manga? Uh, this answer will probably be a bit blasphemous given that most elitists believe that manga must be the best thing ever, but for me it's anime. Because I prefer animation, I prefer when things move around, when there's music, when there's quality voice acting. And now I know that in 9 out of 10 cases, manga is better than the anime. What do you think cosplay would be like in the year 2080? Ah, that's a tough one, uh, provided that we all survive the zombie apocalypse, which will probably happen before 2080. I think that it would be quite different than what we know nowadays, because already now some new technologies are changing cosplay, like uh, 3D printing, which is basically there as the easiest way to get 
exact replica of props and armors and similar stuff. So with 3D printing, I guess that even in 5 to 10 years, costume would look different, let alone what will happen by 2018. Send a short message to everyone who's watching. I cost $11 in $40.